Please welcome Ohio Governor John Kasich. Welcome to the show. Before we get into the interview, uh, there are a lot of people who know you from the campaign trail and from Ohio, but uh, I think a lot of people want questions answered, and especially about this. The sausage is really good. I love sewer. I'm gonna have a little strudel. I just eat this like this. How about a little cheese on the top of this? Mamma mia. <laughs> John Kasich, <laughs> were you using the presidency as a ruse to get free food? <laughs> you know, my wife said that if you ever eat again in front of a camera, you're not sleeping at home. <laughs> so, my wife is beautiful, so I gave up eating altogether. Oh, but, uh, that's nice. But that's you know nice. what? It was um, coming here. Is the food not the best in New York? I mean, it's just fantastic. <laughs> you know. Nice and played. Nice and played. And, uh, you know, it was a great time. By the way, you know, I won Manhattan, so uh, I'm kind of the president of Manhattan. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know how I did in Trump Tower, but I think I did pretty well. <laughs> I think you did, because Melania's the only person there, and she probably voted for you as well. So, yeah. <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about you, and let's get into the presidency. You are the governor of Ohio. There's the saying, as Ohio goes, so goes uh, the election. Your constituents didn't support Trump in the primaries, and uh, they did support Donald Trump in the election. Looking at what Donald Trump has done now, five days away from 100 days in the presidency, in touch with your people on the ground, how are they reacting to Donald Trump's presidency? I think people that voted for him are still hanging in there. I think very few of the people who voted for him have said, you know, they don't like him, and yeah. you know, this is part of the problem. It's almost like rooting for a sports team. You know, you wear your uniform and you're always for your team regardless. And I think over time, if the jobs don't come back, that'll begin to change. But this is part of the problem we have in the country. Everybody's sort of dividing themselves. Okay, so if you're a liberal, you read uh, liberal editorials, you watch liberal television, right. you, you know, go to the Huffington Post. If you're a conservative, you, you know, you do conservative television, you do Rush Limbaugh and conservative editorials. So people are all locked in these silos. And we only consume what we want. Frankly, it's, we're all affected by it. Think about Facebook. You know, put something up there I don't like, I unfriend you. I mean, we're to the point where people are not listening to each other. But, but now, and being able to, you know, hear what you have to say, show you a little respect, and... Uh, but now, but, but now, couldn't some people argue, though, that politicians have played a big role in that? I, I love what you talk about in the book, two paths in America, divided or united. But many people would argue. I remember when I first watched debates, yeah. it seemed like Is you that what those were? hate each other. <laughs> Is yeah. that what those were? I, I didn't yeah. know what... I stood on the end of the stage. It was like in a... <laughs> It was like going to the Olympics and swimming. I was way out here, you were in and I was Is watching. You were? I was watching these, this stuff, and I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" But it seemed like everyone there was opposed. It seemed like everyone didn't agree. Everyone was hyperbolic. If he's president, it's the end. If she's president, it's the end. Don't you think that there is a large role that politicians play? Oh no, no, no. There's no question. I mean, the politicians now are not the, providing the kind of leadership we'd like to see. Right now, you know, if you compromise, if you work with the other party, in either party, this is true for either of them, that somehow you're a sellout. Yeah. And I, I was in Congress when we, we reformed welfare, when we balanced the budget. I negotiated with the Clinton people. We got the deal done. We actually balanced the budget. We paid down debt so these people weren't locked in for the rest of their lives and right. paying all that. But if you don't work together and have some degree of bipartisanship, nothing is sustainable. But look, it's with everything we see today. I wrote this book not because I want some political platform. I wrote this book because it's not just politics that's letting us down. Try flying United. <laughs> okay? Um... No, so, I mean, think about that, this. That, that tells you how bad it is for United. We've gotten to the point where politicians are like, but what about United? Yes. <laughs> uh, Grant, huh? uh, but, but listen, it's, it's, throughout our, it's throughout our culture now. We have become so self-absorbed, and we're not willing to put our hearts with others. And we have to get this back, Trevor. And but would you, would you not argue that it has gone the other way, though? Would you not argue that United is, a, is, is an example of what you're talking about in the it book? It is. It's, it's America going, we are, we are united, because we saw what happened, we don't stand with it, we put I, pressure I, uh, on United as people. That's I, a good thing. I think that that's... I think one of the things that I like is the activism we're seeing. Yes. Now, a lot of Republican congressmen don't like that activism, but, I mean, the fact is, when people start to rise up, 
You had the science thing. You had the Women's March. I mean, it's good stuff. And what I liked about, look, the problem with the United thing is everybody in the studio has been on an airplane, and we're starting to get the sense that we don't matter, that something's bigger than us and, and we don't matter. I got news for you. We matter just as much as the CEO or the President of the United States. It doesn't matter whether you're running the company or turning off the lights. Wow. Now, I like that. We all matter. Black lives matter. I like no, that. Hey, Trevor. Uh, Trevor. You heard it here first, folks. Trevor. But, but we, 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 before, before you go on that, okay. I, I just wanted to stop you on what you said with the Republicans, because in your book, this is what I, I truly love, and you, you wrote it on the back of the book as well, but you, you talk about there is one choice, the path that exploits anger, encourages resentment, turns fear into hatred, and divides people. You cannot deny that that is what Donald Trump ran on. You cannot deny that Donald Trump continues to fuel his, his, his power with that. When you are looking at Donald Trump and you're looking at the Republican Party as a whole, isn't there a part of you that goes, this is no longer my party? Because as John Kasich, you haven't endorsed Donald Trump. You didn't vote for Donald Trump. You are one of the few Republicans who hasn't buckled and kissed to, the ring. I didn't go to the convention you didn't. in I my know. own state. That was a lot of fun. That's People weird, really liked yeah. me for that. Because <laughs> you have to leave. That makes it Look, even harder. Look, I have a right to define what it means to be a conservative and a right. Republican. The same way I have a right to define what it means to be a man of faith. I mean, I can, I can do that. I have right. a right to do that. And so, look, I think with, with Donald Trump, he was a populist. I'm a populist. He was a negative populist. I'm a positive populist. People are hurting. People losing their jobs. Their kids can't get work. They're, they're underpaid. And so that's real. So you have two ways of looking at it. You take somebody like that and you say, well, it's somebody else's fault and somebody else ripped you off. Right. And you drive that anger. Or you can look at him and say, this is a terrible thing, but let's work it out. Let's right. figure it out. We live in a society today where you want a bumper sticker solution or you take a pill and everything's going to be great. Immediate. We, this, this problem in this country of growing divisions has been going on for decades, decades. And we're not going to pull out of this, Trevor, overnight. It's going to take us. So give me a, let me give you an example. Why don't we start mentoring kids? Why don't we, as the Republican or Democrat, start giving our kids encouragement? Why don't we fight the drug battle and, and warn people about the dangers of drugs together? Uh -huh. why, don't we vis you know, why don't we help veterans get jobs when they get home? Why aren't we looking out for them? You see, getting together, let me, let me finish this thought. Getting together with common humanity can allow us to begin to talk to one another again. Right. Because right now, you can't even... Lady moved her wedding out of America because if she invited her family, there'd have been a fist fight. So she had her she had her wedding out of the country. You know in your own families that there are there are fights going on. And these things are not that critical. What's critical is what's happening in your family and what's happening next door. And just like the United passengers drove the change up, change up, we need to drive the change up to solve problems in, in this country and recapture our culture. It's interesting because you you say in the book, you say in the book that many people in America argue that there is a lack of leadership. There's a crisis of leadership. And one of the lines that struck me in the book is you say you would argue that there is also a crisis of fellowship. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, that means that if you are in any organization, and the folks here tonight work in different places, you look at your leader and you say, is the leader taking us to the right place? And if the vision is right, we follow. Yes. And then leaders emerge among the followers. If all of a sudden the leader's taking us off a cliff, you can't keep following the leader. And you have to have disruptors in any organization that can tell the big cheese, like, Trevor, that was not a very funny joke. Stay away from that, okay? <laughs> and as long as they're for you, then you have to accept it. Right. So it's not just we need better leaders. Without shepherds, it doesn't work. But even with shepherds, you have to have people that'll, that'll, that'll get behind the leader and guide that organization and not just blindly. Let me, let me ask you a question that I've, I've always wanted to know. During the race, during the campaign, in fact, I think it was Donald Trump Jr., he gave your office a call, and he said, will John Kasich run with Donald Trump? And in exchange, he will run the government and the military and all structures, basically. I mean, I paraphrase this, but right. he will run everything. And I think your office replied, well, then what will the president do? And they said, well, he'll make America great again. <laughs> I, I honestly wonder, looking at what's happening now, if you could go back, would you take that deal? No, 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 no. I, I didn't... I, look, the reason... Some people think that I didn't endorse Trump or go to the convention because I was bitter. No, I had a message that meant a lot to me. People need to li live a life a little bigger than themselves, that we all have to help one another. And people think that if you're in politics, you say things and it's all transactional. That's baloney. 
The things I say, you I say believe. the food. The food coming back again. There you go. <laughs> the food, but, but carry you know, on. <laughs> but look, uh, look, what I'm saying to you is we, how can I? <laughs> That's too good. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Okay. No, but I, I, I hear what you're saying. You're saying, you're saying, and, and uh, I, forgive me for cutting you off there, yeah. but, but, but I hear what you are saying. And, and, and there I, is so a I feeling... couldn't do it. No, I'm not going back, and the... I couldn't do that, and I feel great, and I'm happy. Of, you know, it, everything is good. Now, I want to say one other thing, because yes. I watched a little bit of the last segment, because they do want to talk just for a second about, about faith, and I'll tell you why I say it. I think sometimes people in religion have given religion a bad, a bad uh, a reputation. Let me tell you what it is for me. Religion is honor, honor God because, mm -hmm. and that gives me humility, and secondly, love my neighbor, connect me with my community, put me in somebody else's shoes, I'll learn to help somebody get up and live a life bigger than myself. That to me is what religion is about. Right, right. And if you're, you know, and if you're a humanist and you want to change the world, I'm all for you. But you know, let's not throw out the fact that values matter and that we we will, we have a responsibility for what we have been given. And that gets back to the issue of no one's better than anybody else. Because I believe in the eyes of the big guy, we're all equal. And I, we all have talents and we need to use that, it to change and heal this world. That's what this book is all about for me. That's, that's what comes across in the book. And I agree with you in many points. I mean, you're right. There are some people who make religion look bad. That is what Muslims are struggling from all over the world. Um, when you talk about these issues in your book. Let's talk a little bit about policy before I let you yeah, go, sure. because that's one thing about you. People may not agree with all of your politics. There are things where people don't agree on everything. But one thing I remember consistently was, if you asked a Democrat or a Republican toward the end of the race, all right, Democrats, you can't get Hillary. Republicans, you can't get Trump. Trump, but everyone can get Kasich. A lot of people would have said yes, and they said you balanced budgets, you you went into a surplus, you you increased the jobs in Ohio. People, I've been in your well, state. And, people and, love and, you. Well, and Trevor, the other thing we've done is I've not tried to leave anybody behind. The mentally ill, the drug addicted, the uh, the chronically ill. Everybody has to have a sense in a country that they have a chance, right. and that the people who are running the place are aware of them. And so we, you know, even on police and community relations, I have a an African American liberal Democrat who's working with a, with a former head of the highway patrol, and yes. we now have standards that we have never had before. There's nothing like it in the country. Dig into a problem. Don't care about whether you're a Republican or Democrat. Lift the people, and, and look, I'm not, I ain't that great a guy. I just do the best I can, Trevor. Wake up the next day and do a little bit better, but you know, we're all basically failed, and that's the great thing <laughs> we are. Well, I mean, I... You're not, Trevor. I'm not. I host, not. I host the Daily Show from your, Africa. I, I, uh, no. But, uh, no, no, I hear what you're saying. I know what you're saying. No, and I saw your demo, so I know you're doing really, really well. I mean... No, but, uh, but, but going to that, you, you, you have all of this. Let's talk about what changes you would implement. A lot yeah. of people would not realize that as much as you are a Republican, you are one of the people who led the expansion of sure, Medicaid yeah. in your state. Yes. You were not for the replacing and repealing of Obamacare the way it is. You agree no. that it's, it's, it's broken we and all, needs to be we fixed in many ways. Be, we're not yes. gonna, we, should, we cannot willy-nilly just pass some, some proposal that's going to cut off coverage for the mentally ill and the drug addicted. They got to go to the doctor all the time to yeah. get better. And some of them have to go for a long time. And we're going to pass some bill out of Washington that doesn't take into account those lives? That's nonsense. And I'm going to speak out if I can and have a voice. You, you also speak out against gerrymandering. And well, this, this, yeah. this is something I, I wanted to find out. You from think you. they know what that is? It's because, oh, this is the Daily Show crowd. Yeah. Don't mess with them. <laughs> Don't mess with these people. Don't mess with everyone watching the show, everyone here. So one of the biggest issues that America is dealing with now is that a lot of politicians are choosing their constituents, and so they no longer have to serve in the same way that a public this... servant has always had to. And so, Ohio, you guys are, are getting to a place where you have to make a decision. I think it's in November. You'll correct me if I'm wrong, but now you're going to choose between having an independent commission, bipartisan, that gerrymanders or that really draws the district lines, or the other option is to go with a two-thirds majority of politicians who decide this which side are you falling on? I'm for whatever side is going to carve out fairer districts. I don't care what it is. I don't care who it benefits. And but you, this... but you, you, I mean, it, it would be... I've demanded you, that we it have... it would seem that the politicians are not the people to choose who should vote for the politicians. Well, no, I, I agree with that, Trevor, but you have to operate within the system. And now the, the people in, that I work with there are saying, you're right on this gerrymandering. See, because yes. here's what happens. You carve a Republican district, a Democrat can't win. You carve a Democratic district, a Republican can't win. So yes. what happens? 
If you're a Republican, you have to fear the right. If you're a Democrat, you fear, uh, you fear the left. So we become farther and farther apart. It's a, it is a disaster. And so there is, and then if you compromise, by the way, uh, then you're called a traitor. And, you know, today a lot of people gave up bowling and took up watching politics. They ought to go back to bowling. We'd have a little <laughs> bit smoother situation. That's a big problem. The other big problem is for president, a handful of billionaires can pick a president, and that's just dead wrong. And right. I, that's a Supreme Court ruling, and I'm against it. I, uh, I honestly could not recommend to people more that they, they read the book. You are a, a rare breed of politician who seems to stick to what he says. Uh, it has been an honor having you on the show. Thank you for your book. I enjoy it. Congratulations! You've been randomly selected as a winner of free Daily Show episodes. Yes, you. To claim your prize, just watch full episodes of The Daily Show for free anytime with the Comedy Central app or at thedailyshow.com. What a winner you are. So much winning.